I'm Pete Samuels, I'm the executive producer for Until Dawn and we're here in Las Vegas talking about the new gameplay demo that we brought along. Let's talk a little about the history of this game because it's actually started back on the PS3. What has PS4 opened up for you guys when you went back and remade this game? Well, a massive amount, I mean a huge amount. In, in terms of fidelity in the first instance and what we could do uh, with a horror title to get the, the realism uh, and the atmosphere on the PlayStation 4 compared to PlayStation 3. But also when we first announced it for PlayStation 3, we got a lot of feedback from the fan base. Um, wanting to play it. So it was a move title at the time, wanted to play it with, uh, with a, a dual shock. And uh, so we took that on board, went away and looked at the game, redesigned the game, um, and rewrote a whole load of it, recast, and made it specifically for PlayStation 4. How were you able to assemble the actors that you have featured in this game? I think there's a, there's a lot more interest in uh, in Hollywood now from film and TV actors uh, wanting to wanting to do something in games and um, you know it was it we got a great casting agent over there uh, and she helped us find our way through uh, approaching the right people and finding the people that had interest in doing it. Um, we were looking for a very specific type of cast, for a, uh, a cast that would match our story and our, and our genre. And uh, yeah, we found a, a great cast of, of eight people that uh, we thought were perfect for the game. Yeah. Some of those people have actually gone up in stature since you guys actually created this game. You're talking about Brett. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Well, uh, bizarrely, I think we gave, or Brett says, we gave him his first job. Where, and that was when we were, we were doing it for PlayStation 3. Um, but we loved him so much that uh, we, he was one of, the, one of just a couple that we asked to come over to, uh, to continue on the PlayStation 4. And of course, he's gone from strength to strength with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and so on since. But uh, he's, a, and he's a great guy to work with. When it comes to performance capture, can you talk about the technology and how you worked with the actors? Yeah, we're doing a lot of stuff that's, um, that, that's leading edge in terms of facial capture uh, in, and in terms of the way that we use uh, the technology, the blend shapes, and the way that we capture performance. Um, we get through a lot in a day. I think uh, one of the big differences for the actors is uh, you know, how many lines we shoot in a day compared to if they're working TV or film. It's, it's pretty grueling for them. But we, cap we capture a lot of, a lot of stuff with... Uh, you know, tight markers on the face and uh, full facial scans to get to get the fidelity in the model. Uh, and we've got a great process uh, for building the rigs, which, which drive the facial animation and give us that fidelity. What has PS4 opened up in terms of facial capture and performance capture technology and what you guys can do with a number of actors? Well, it, it's awesome. Just the process and power that we've got now, and obviously we use the uh, the Killzone engine that we've we've kind of modified quite extensively to to suit what we need out of it compared to what Gorilla need out of it for uh, for Killzone. And we've put a lot of focus into how much processing we use for facial animation and how much we allocate to that. Um, and that gives us the, the fidelity that you're seeing until dawn and the fidelity of expressions and, and the eye movements and uh, we're very we take a long time over it to, to get the faces right to get the emotions right to come across because you know it's a horror game and that the, the emotion of uh, of those characters needs to come through what are the challenges of creating interactive horror i think i think some of the challenges that we've tried to address have been um the uh, making death fatal um, to raise that uh, that sense of threat and that sense of loss and to make it important to make the decisions important to keep characters alive uh, rather than um, learning how to survive a scene uh, and then replaying it and replaying it until you can survive it obviously and until dawn when your character's dead they're dead and the story adapts and continues without them so one of the big challenges in design for us was how do we do that still give everybody a great story no matter how many characters live or survive and, and a great nine hour experience so pretty huge design challenges in that um, but we're thrilled with, the, with what we've come out with at the end and Genuinely, people will have very different experiences, very different stories, um, and we think and they'll all be great stories. What does that open up for replay value? Well, yeah, I think there's, there's two things about that. Yeah, there's a great, I will say there's a great amount of replay value. The other thing I will say, though, is once you know the story and what's really going on, then playing it a second time will be a very different experience because you'll have knowledge that you didn't have the first time that you played. Um, but sure, to play through it and try and get a, a different result, a better result, everyone survive or everyone die, depending on the result you're trying to get. Uh, yeah, there's great replay value there. 